Hello. Oi. I'm Waterbeard. It's Halloween, figured I'd dress up as something. Hello, and welcome to my menagerie of bullshit. Yes, it is that time of year. The time of year where we tell each other terrible, scary shit. That we mostly just make up on the spot. But anyway, today I'm going to be doing something a little different than usual. I'm going to be sharing some real life accounts of supernatural activity. These accounts are brought to us by show favourite Chris Boards. I don't know if you guys remember him. He is known also as the Irate Gamer. Yes, he wrote a book about ghost theology. And yes, Wait, theology? What am I, a Game of Thrones writer? Yes, he wrote a book about ghost theory. I don't know what the fuck you call it. But it's just as insane as you think. Now, as a sort of disclaimer, I have no trouble with the idea of ghost hunters existing. I think ghost hunting is stupid, and it's fake, and a bunch of other things. But if you like doing it, do it. Seriously, I have the same attitude with all of these people, like furries, LARPers, all sorts of shit. If what you're doing involves either yourself or other consenting adults, then go for it. Have fun. As long as nobody's hurt, so long as no third party who didn't sign up to it is hurt, I'm down for any shit. But, that doesn't mean I can't point out that sometimes you people are fucking insane. And in this instance, that's what I'm doing. So I basically took a 200 page book, mostly because the text was like really big, and I put it all on here, and I have basically just made a small sort of summary of around 50 pages, which is still way too long. Um, I didn't actually want it to be this long, but it just kind of is. So, without further ado, let's begin with this insanity. Insanity that has been written by a man who is still out there, still inflicting this madness on the world. So, the first thing I want to point out is grammatically and spellings wise, the weirdest of all the punctuation in this is very wrong. Uh, one thing I noticed that he does a lot is he uses speech marks instead of uh, apostrophes. So there's, there's like, he, he does some other weird stuff as well, but this is the weirdest one. Um, and it always comes up as red on any word, you know, any translate, uh, not translation, on any spell check software that I run this through. Um, word is just a mass of red lines whenever I put something of his in because it's just a mess um, of this. I looked it up and apparently some countries do it, like I think one place around the Netherlands does it, but that's pretty obscure, I think he is just fucking up. He starts off by addressing people like me, critics, uh, skeptics as he calls them. On page 10 he says, I'm sure this book will find its fair share of criticism from skeptics that want to put my methods under a microscope. When it comes to the paranormal, people have a need to see it to believe it attitude. I understand the reaction though, because I also tend to react the same way. When I hear someone say that they have found something that is too good to be true, I often feel like I need to challenge them on it. So to all the critics out there, I offer you this. Use the same tools, head out to the haunted locations, and ask the same questions I pose to the spirits. I guarantee you will get the same reaction I got. Now. The first, the first point I want to make is that's not addressing the criticisms. That's just saying you go out and you get a better result, buddy, which isn't really addressing a criticism. I mean, that's like someone saying that they don't agree with my review. So I'm like, well, you go out and read the book yourself and uh, make your own review, buddy. Yeah, that, that's like a really bad response to criticism, uh, which I have made once or twice. Oops. In this instance, though, um, he also points out that 
he doesn't really see these spirits, these trapped human souls, as anything more than, like, something you just prod with a stick. So he's actually suggesting that we go out and find these dead children and dead prisoners and just people who have been lost souls for centuries and just annoy the shit out of them with fake Ghostbuster equipment. So that's good. So the next bit, he's talking about the one time that he did actually dissuade um, a skeptic. On page 12, he says, As we all stood in the basement, I pulled out my trusty K2 meter. Oh, the fucking K2 meter. I'll get to that, what that thing is. But that thing is just bloody hilarious. I'll get to it later, though. This is one of the devices that I use in contacting spirits. It is one of the easiest ways for a spirit to interact with humans, since it requires very little effort on their part to manipulate the lights on the device. With the K2 meter firmly in my hand, I called out to the empty room. If there's anyone in here, please light up this device for me. I waited for the answer. Could you please light up my device briefly? I want these nice folks to see that you exist. Everyone stared at the meter intensively for a response. Oh, intently for a response. I mean, it's the same thing. Whatever. You know, I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth. After a long while, I decided to use a different tactic. This time, I would try enticing the spirit with what I call a food offering. Can you please light that meter up if you're here? I have peanut butter. Would you like some? He does this multiple times, by the way. He offers the ghosts peanut butter. I don't know why. There's actually video footage of him just offering random ghosts peanut butter. Go. Hello. The Avila said eat. And Avilus is what I like to call a voice box for the dead. This thing seems to pick up on the energy in an area and associate a word with it. Are you hungry? Do you want some food? Do you want some peanut butter? I always wonder, like, if you ever found a ghost, like, in a warehouse who died of a peanut allergy, how pissed would that ghost be? He was like, hey, do you want some peanut butter? Like, even if it can't kill the ghost or hurt it in any way, it's just gonna think it's taking the piss. I opened up the plastic jar and placed it next to the K2 meter. Then, like magic, it happened. The light on the K2 meter danced to life. The interplay had begun. Can you do that well, just one more time? So I know you're here with us. The meter spiked a second time on command. Now, I knew for sure this wasn't a fluke. We were dealing with something intelligent. Unlike me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. I'm gonna try and keep the low blows as... Uh, I did get in trouble for that last time off a few of Chris Bors' fans. Who are very loyal to him, despite the fact that he has lied to them constantly this year alone. But let's not get into that. In order to keep the spirit talking, it was time to figure out who we were talking to. In the past, the building had been used as an all-girls Catholic school. I knew this meant the spirit could either be a teacher or a student. I didn't know I wasn't the creepy janitor. Could you tell me if you were one of the nuns that worked here? No response. Were you one of the students? The meter spiked. This meant yes. Excellent. So, you are a student here. The meter spiked again. Yes. The meter continued spiking for almost 20 minutes. It captivated everyone in the room. Even Fred, the skeptic, came up afterwards to tell me that he was skeptical at first, but he had to rethink things after witnessing this interplay, after being given a genuinely ghostly encounter. Fred became a believer. He saw for himself that no one was tampering with the meter, and that it was only reacting after we asked the question. It was a great moment to be part of. Okay, I want to say, Fred, you're an idiot. Just because no one's touching the meter doesn't mean that it's not being tampered with. In fact, it is being tampered with, and I'll explain that a little further when we actually get to this equipment list. But even if it wasn't a device that could be tampered with in that way, they could still tamper with it in another way. Like, how do we know that it's not just picking up a phone signal on the other side of the wall? So, this is Chris Bors' uh, investigation. Uh, I won't read the whole thing in his voice because it's long and I'm going to trip over a lot. So, this is one of his early ones where he goes to um, a reformatory building and he finds a ghost. 
Uh, and he's trying to prove that ghosts exist. So he's brought his paranormal evidence lock up. Um, and his mate Alan. Okay, um, I'm going to have to stop myself here. So I wasn't aware of this, right? But Chris Bores about 10 years ago had a ghost show on his channel. On his irate gamer channel. And it turns out that all of the encounters in this book have been put on film and uploaded to his channel. Which is fucking amazing. I've always wanted to see what happened. So in a lot of cases where I ask questions, we can actually find out the answers. We can actually get a video perspective of these things happening. And we can also get, just get to see the stupidity happen before our eyes. Which kind of ruins it because it was more funny to imagine it. But anyway, yes, I have episodes of this show. It's hilarious. So I'm going to divulge away from this every now and then just so I can show you the show. And they start to have a serious investigation, but then other ghost hunters turn up like a bunch of dicks and ruin it. Because, you know, this, this is for Chris only, this area. So... They kept bumping into all the ghost hunters for like ages and they were like, oh no man, we can't get anything done. But then... We began looking down hallways and as I, I panned to the left to look down a hallway, I, I saw what looked like a ghost in a sheet. Jesus, boy, that made me crap. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, they actually do appear like a ghost in a sheet. No, wait a minute. And it scared me for a moment, then I realized it was a big cutout for Halloween. So we all had a really roarous laugh with that as our, there's our first encounter, first experience is, you know, Casper the ghost floating around in the basement. Oh, he also talks about the orb. Do you get orbs on your pictures? Try the dust, there is so much dust. Now, the orb thing is actually disproven in this, but like the idea of it is condemned in this book and that's one of the few things that I think he does that's good because the amount of TV shows that go, oh, look at the orb. You could see an orb on the camera. It's not an orb, guys. It's a speck of dust flying through the air. It's probably happened on this video if you look carefully enough. Um, so that's, you know, just one thing that I can say. Yeah, he did that right. He condemned the idea that these orb dusts are in any way supernatural. So good going, Chris. So then he moves on to talk about how... He wanted to get some EVPs, which are recordings of ghosts. He describes it here as electronic voice phenomena, where you hear a voice of a ghost on the recording afterwards. I've been recording a lot of shit for years. I've never had this happen. But then again, this isn't a haunted house, as far as I know. My uncle Phil hasn't ever come back from the dead and haunted it, so that's a plus. Oh my God. So, sometimes it's garbled and hard to hear, most of the time it's just wishful thinking, but... Around the same time that we smelled gunpowder, our cameras picked up this sound. Could this be the sound of a woman moaning? <laughs> There's this funny uh, exchange through his area. We asked a series of questions to the empty room around us. Would you like to talk to your loved ones? Alan asked. Almost instantly, a woman's voice whispered back, No! Is there any ghosts or any inmates who are in here because they enjoy talking with their loved ones? Upon listening to the audio recorded by our camera, we ended up hearing a response to Alan's question. Is there any ghosts or any inmates who are in here because they enjoy talking with their loved ones? Could this be a woman's voice saying no? Enjoy talking with their loved ones. Their loved ones. <laughs> I love that. Like, there's just some woman who's like, no, piss off. I don't want to talk to my stupid fucking loved ones. It's their fault I'm here. This completely blew me away when I listened to it on our recordings the following day. I knew that I didn't hear this at the time of the recording, but. There it was, clear as a bell. We kind of got it. This is just eyewitness testimony, which is the lowest form of scientific evidence. He does offer some other forms of science, which I honestly find it difficult. 
because I didn't do quantum physics, so I have no idea what he's on about. I'm assuming it's crap, though, like everything else. Um, so he catches another one where he's trying to get his team member to take the video camera, and they weren't taking it. And Chris is like, I'm paying for the evening. Take the camera. You got the email. I did not. Now this is what we think we hear. I do not And then after that, the young girl's voice broke into our conversation. She's like, thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> So the ghost is just taking the piss out of him, apparently. I don't know who this crew member is. He's treating like shit. I, it, was it a woman? Who, oddly enough, sounds like a ghost? That's kind of what I want to know at this point. That would legitimately interest me. Was the voice just the woman's voice? Just muttering under... Oh, thanks. And then he's like, Oh, shit! It was a ghost all along! <laughs> Maybe the woman was a ghost, the crew member. I'm the kind of person that wants to know the reasoning behind everything. This is where my suspension of disbelief is broken, by the way. Chris Bors doesn't want to know the reasoning behind everything. Fuck, he's incapable of understanding the reasoning behind most things. And this EVP caused me to question everything surrounding the circumstances of this voice. My main concern at this point was figuring out why the young girl was roaming the halls of a prison. This was baffling. Well, I mean, yeah. I do love a good mystery, and this one was calling out to me. It is something that even Scooby-Doo and the gang would have trouble solving. Jesus Christ. One thing he does is, like, name drops random films and TV shows. I know that he kind of does it as an offer of comparison sometimes. Like, he'll say, oh, this happens, like, in The Exorcist. But after a while, it makes you kind of wonder, does he actually think stuff like The Exorcist is real? I hope not. I, I legitimately hope not. Why is the little girl in this prison? What is she doing here so late at night? <laughs> Curthview was a few hours ago. I don't give a shit if she was a ghost. <laughs> so, like, that's where his mind goes. Just what's she doing this late at night? She's dead. What does it matter? Like, she can't be hurt. So why does it matter where she is at night? She probably doesn't even sleep because she's a ghost. I mean, I, throughout this, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that there actually are ghosts and this just didn't... What if she was... Was she hanging out with the other spirits of the inmates? <laughs> I like that idea. The little girl ghost just smoking with the... Uh, with the naughty Jack Nicholson from um, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest looking guys. <laughs> What makes this EVP so creepy is the extreme clarity of this third voice. Whoever broke into our conversation had to have been standing very close to the microphone. And oddly enough, the voice sounds like that of a young girl. If this is the case, then why is a child roaming the hallways of this prison? Interacting with these dangerous people, they're not really dangerous to her anymore, she's dead. Like, they literally can't do anything else to her. Did she live here? I feel like Batman trying to solve one of the Riddler's riddles. I remember that one. The riddle of, why is there a little girl living in a fucking prison? Uh, this. That there's a little girl living in a prison? A little girl ghost? So, he began to wonder if it was like one of the prisoners pretending to be the little girl. If ghosts can do that, I guess that's a possibility. These are just like theories, and he starts just immediately treating them as fact. Uh, he treats everything he says in here as fact, indisputable fact. The fact that ghost exists, for example. Um, the idea of ghosts being in this world is indisputable in this book. Um, there's never an, another explanation as to what things could be. Uh, a creaking must be a ghost. Uh, can't open a door, must be a ghost. So... He then goes to a manor. He leaves the little girl to live with the prisoners because he's not actually giving a shit about them as people. He only really cares about them as a sideshow attraction. Okay, so in this next one, he goes to um, a mansion that's abandoned or something. 
The Longwood Manor, located in Macedonia, Ohio, was built in the early 1900s. Shortly after, unexplainable events began occurring in the house. In the basement, people have managed to capture EVPs of a young boy on audio tape. With all these reports in mind, the haunted investigators will take the case of the Longwood Manor. Apparently the tour guide wasn't telling them where the paranormal activity was happening, it's almost like it's a load of bollocks. Uh, now is this the room where the uh, batteries exploded in? I'm not supposed to touch you, not supposed to say anything. As we went around and were being led around and given the first um, tour of the house, they did not want to give us information, they did not want to let us know, well this is a haunted spot or this is a haunted spot. I mean, for the most part, we might as well have just been there for a, a basic tour of Longwood Manor. I don't know. I don't know who told you not to tell us, but kind of yeah, we like, enjoy being. Yeah, because it so, gives us yeah. a chance maybe, to like maybe call them out. I'm not maybe, <laughs> maybe maybe someone else might be as weak-minded that he'll do it to it, but we're not weak-minded. <laughs> you serious? Okay, so apparently they had EVPs of a young boy in a basement. This is one of the funnier encounters in this thing. Naturally, this was the first location we headed to. I'm not going to do the Chris Balls voice because he's doing my throat in. And I've got quite a lot to read. I began setting up our equipment and pulled out our audio recorders. If there is a little boy down here, would you like... You know, I'll read the uh, voices uh, as Chris. If there's a little boy down here, would you like to come out and say hello to us? I asked. Thanks for that, Chris. <laughs> we sat here in the dark for a few minutes, waiting for an answer. Things remained very still. Upon looking around, I noticed a small ball on the floor. I thought it would be a good idea to entice the boy with it. I don't like where this is going. Uh, <laughs> would you like to play with that ball? At the time, we did not hear a response. But upon listening to the tape, a voice had answered back, No. I just thought I had the spirits just say no. Like every time they just shoot me down with the word no on its own, that's it. Do you want to play with that ball? Do you want to play with that ball? Do you want to play with that ball? Could this be the little boy responding to Jennifer's question? Do you want to play with that ball? The voice sounded exactly like the same young boy the director had told us about. What, did he do the voice himself? Amazing! We had been at the house for only five minutes and we'd already caught our first EVP. Trying to entice the boy for a reaction through the ball, please stop saying that, had worked. We are off to a great start. After investigating the basement area, we made our way to all the bathrooms, bedrooms and even the attic. Despite our best efforts, everything remained very quiet. Before leaving, we decided to head to the basement one last time. We sat in the dark for quite a while before anything started to happen. Without warning, we felt the temperature drop around us. Was this the cold spot phenomenon everyone reports during a ghostly encounter? I should probably charge the battery. Alright then, so I've tried not to change anything but the battery died so I'm going back to my that's upside down, so that's a good start. Is this the cold spot phenomenon that everyone reports feeling during a ghostly encounter? If so, that meant someone had entered into the room to join us. Are you here with us? I called out. No reply. I sat there wondering how I could further appeal to the young boy. Please. <laughs> Sorry, he's just... Okay, so the young boy haunting this location. Okay, this is where it gets so stupid, I, I'm probably not going to be able to do a take without laughing. I'm probably going to have to do it in Chris's voice just to make it sound even better. Maybe singing a children's song might do the trick. One thing that quickly came to mind was the alphabet song. I learned that one today. <laughs> that was the name, that was me. Surely he would be familiar enough with this song. Hey, do you know your NPCs? Your NPC, what the fuck? Do you know your ABCs? I asked. Would you like to sing with us? I began singing the alphabet song. I felt very stupid doing so in front of everyone. 
As I finished the song, however, my stupidity paid off for once. I felt another abrupt change in the room. The entire area around me felt like there was an electrical charge in the air. This was followed by a tingling sensation running around the back of my neck. Something was here. I just knew it. Are you touching me? I called. Please stop. Stop with that, please. This is just too hard not to take out of context. Everything remained quiet, and the room slowly returned to normal. After a few more minutes, I asked the spirits if they could give us one last sign of their presence before they left. At that moment, one of our teammates felt something prick his arm. When he described the pain, it felt similar to a bee sting. This act certainly did not fit the profile of a playful child. This seemed different altogether. Something was not adding up about this event. And my spidey senses were tingling. Say. While heading home, I began contemplating more about this incident. I wonder if our encounter with the boy was interrupted by a second entity with some malicious intent that intervened with our interaction. This is definitely a mystery that piqued my interest. I arranged a follow-up investigation with the director. The entire evening passed by without any real activity occurring, but thankfully, I did manage to record two more EVPs that would help shed some light in the mystery. The first EVP had been captured whilst investigating the third level of the house. This area contained three bedrooms... Sorry. This area contained... I'm sorry, my sinuses are just all over the fucking place. This area contained three bedrooms and a small bedroom. So, four bedrooms. It contained four bedrooms. Not three bedrooms and a small bedroom. Small bedroom counts as a bedroom, Chris. It contained four bedrooms. During my time up there, I had called out. Why are you in this room? Why were you in the room? Get out of the little boy's room, Chris. Moments later, a faint voice buried deep within my audio track. Help! Help us! The voice sounded like an older woman in a great deal of distress. I could not help but wonder why she was calling out for me to help her. I don't help people. I'm an asshole. <laughs> Again, that was me, but couldn't resist. Again, he, he hears so many crying out in despair. And all he thinks is, wow, I got a ghost on tape. Some real empathy here. Anybody in this area that wish to speak to us? If there's anybody down here, I would like you to touch me on the arm. Can you make a noise? Are you hearing something? Hello, little boy, are you over here? Do you know your ABCs? Do you want to sing with us? How should we sing? ABC. We started to sing some songs in the basement, and that's when things started to pick up. Sing with me. If you want to play, touch Jennifer on the arm. If you touch her, she'll play with you. If you touch her, she'll play with you. I do feel a weird sensation in my right arm. Do you? Yes. Are you touching Jennifer's right arm? Can you do it again? You feel it again? I don't know if that's psychological or not, but it's... Are you touching Jennifer? Oh man, all the hairs on my neck are standing up. Hi. Oh dude, I'm getting goosebumps like majorly. Where's the EMF reader? Like a pin or something. It's tender right there now. Oh. There, look. You can see a little blood thing. You see that right there? Yeah. It's like a pin was pricked in my arm. Our cameraman had felt something sharp hit his arm. Was this caused by the boy? 
or a more hostile spirit that we don't know about. Hello again, it's me with the little addition. So I've watched uh, the actual footage. Turns out Chris over exaggerated the contact they had with this little boy from the looks of it. Uh, he sang about one line of the ABC song. Um, and then nothing happened. So now he's brought this psychic medium, which he actually debunks them in his book. He says they're all con artists, but he has one here. So, as far as I can tell, I think he's talking shit about a lot of this. I mean, I could be wrong. Uh, maybe it's one of us just not remembering events very clearly. Me from 20 seconds ago or him from 20 years ago, it's hard to tell. But um, that could be it. But I genuinely feel like given how Jennifer gets the shaft as far as name and credit goes, I think that there is something kind of weird going on with this. Now here's what we think we hear. All right, I think we're just gonna wrap it up here. Oh, it ends on a pretty good note. In fact, I won't give you the context of this one. Can you make our meter spike again so we know you're here with us? The meter spiked just slightly. She apparently remained fully occupied with the food presented to us. Can you smell the fudge? Uh, fuck. Right. Can you spell the fudge? I asked her. No response. You still here with us? She got the fudge, mate. She's gone. So yeah, he basically gives the fudge. So, that's basically everything I wanted to share from this piece of shit, obviously. Uh, it's kind of repetitive, but it gets there in the end. Uh... I don't even know what I can say, man. This this thing is hilarious. It's one of my favourite comedies. You might be able to find some more stuff that I haven't mentioned. Um, if I have missed some stuff out, then I'm kind of glad. Because if anybody can end up getting this crap, I'd highly recommend it. Because it is goddamn funny. Um, I would go as far as to say this might be one of my favourite shitty books. Like, ever. Because it's just, what the fuck. So, that was my Halloween video. I know that it wasn't my usual affair. I don't know how this is going to look after editing, but I'll do my best. And I hope you enjoy yourselves this year. Um, try not to get attacked by any demons. Well, if you do, you know what to do now. Actually, he didn't tell us what he did. I think he just said some prayers. But just say the Catholic prayer, it's fine. So that's that. Um, I'm going to be taking a bit of a break in November. But hopefully we'll be getting on to... I've got a friend request on Facebook then. So I'm probably going to be doing a lot less in November. Um, because I've had a bit of an overhaul this month. But aside from that... I still enjoy doing this, and I hope that we can, you know, hopefully have some good things coming up for Christmas. I haven't really decided on what I'm going to do for Christmas. I've had one or two ideas, but I don't know if I can do them just yet. But I'll see what I can do. Till then.
you know what? I've just realised I, I that one a bit joke at the beginning, right? Cost me about ten quid to put together, and now I've got to have that stuff in my house for the rest of my days, and I legitimately can't think of a good reason why it's there. That sounds normal. <laughs>